Um, so just to kind of kick, kick us off, uh, we do have a little bit of an agenda. We'll do some welcome and introductions, and then we'll talk about some of the goals, and then we'll move on to the vocab and the coding. So all the fun stuff coming up. So just to kind of move it forward, um, we'll talk a little bit about who Learn Academy is, um, and then uh, little introductions on our, our team. Uh, but just to, before we jump into that, I just want to remind everyone that, um, you know, this is a safe space. This is a safe learning space. So we do ask everybody to treat everybody with respect. Please use very welcoming language and, um, you know, be generous to one another. We do have the ability for everybody to share their screen and unmute themselves. So please do, uh, you know, be aware of what you're sharing on the screen and be aware of what you're saying in the Zoom channel. Anybody who does, you know, break, you know, this code of conduct, we are gonna ask you after to leave. So just let's all be respectful, be nice, and we're gonna keep this show on the road and fun. Uh, cool, so about Learn Academy, real quick. We are a coding bootcamp in San Diego. We were San Diego's first coding bootcamp. Uh, we've been around for just about six years now, 450 graduates. Um, we're a four month full stack program. So uh, with us, uh, you, we do, Full stack of JavaScript, React, Ruby on Rails, which is why we're here, part of Root Rails Conference 2021, super excited. Uh, part of our program is a one month guaranteed internship program, and we do offer all of our alumni career services for life. So we're a family ran company, top to bottom, and we like to treat everybody as a part of our family. Once you're in it, you're always a part of the family. So uh, we have some great financing and scholarship options that we just had available. We just got approved for vet tech. So any veterans out there, we are approved for the vet tech program and you can now join our bootcamp as a part of it. Um, we do a deferred tuition agreement with Stride. So we are um, allowing students to now, once they get a job, they can start paying for the program when that begins. Um, and we have multiple financing and scholarship options available. We do a lot of free workshops and free uh, meetups. Uh, they are all online now. So you can learn more about that at meetup.com slash learn academy. Um, and then connect with us. We're all over the place. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all over the place. Please connect with us and uh, be a part of uh, our amazing uh, network and community. So just a little bit about me. My name is TJ Kidder. I'm the marketing manager here at Learn. Um, yeah, so uh, I, could, uh, I, I manage all that. I'm sure you can see where, where I fit into the equation. If you have any questions to me, you can always reach out to TJ at learnacademy.org. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to pass it off to our awesome team to host this workshop. So Leanne, would you like to uh, go ahead and get, get us started? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Leanne. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. I um, am a Learn Academy alumni. I went to the Learn Academy in the summer of 2016 is when I started. And my internship was with a company called Notch 8. And um, so in October of 2016, I started at Notch 8 as an intern. At the end of my internship, I was hired as a full-time developer. And I've been there ever since. And as of March, I am now, I've gone from intern all the way up to senior developer with the company. And um, Notch 8 is a San Diego-based company, but I work out of Portland, Oregon. I just moved last year. So um, I've been working full-time remote during this pandemic. And um, um, also about Notch 8 was we do um, consulting. So we build apps for other companies and for universities and uh, public institutions. And um, we do almost everything in touches Ruby on Rails. So we are like a Rails consultancy. Um, we do have some products that are in-house and uh, just a few of our own custom products. And we do some hosting and DevOps um, system reliability stuff for companies as well. Um, and that's me, and um, I guess I'll head it over to Matt. Hey everyone, um, I'm Matt. I'm also a Learn uh, alumni. I graduated in September of 2017. Um, I did my internship for a company called Victorize um, that does um, <clears throat> sports enhancements for like glasses and um, things like that, where you can um, map out your run um, or your bike track and see if you've been um, up to par with previous ghosts. Um, after that, I got hired at a company called Lease Labs. Um, that was, that is doing full marketing suites for rental um, property companies. Um, so if you've uh, 
rented an apartment from big companies. Most likely their website is one of ours. Um, <laughs> and we've been acquired by RealPage, which is a Texas company um, out of Dallas. And um, they also do full marketing suite for um, big rental um, companies. And I've been doing websites and now Widget works um, with them and more um, precisely, I'm doing floor plans um, widgets. So you, you can choose your floor plan, you get all your amenities and things like that. And I've been with the company for now two and a half years. All right, let's get, um, just go over a couple of our goals. So um, the, also this, um, basically our workshop today is really pulled straight from the curriculum of Learn Academy. So this is kind of, we're gonna kind of do it in a more compact way um, normally, but it's based upon like a day in the life of the classroom. So you get a good feel of that. But um, our goals today are really to understand what is the Rails MVC uh, model view controller structure. Um, we're gonna map CRUD actions to HTTP verbs, HTTP verbs, which um, you might also know as RESTful routes. Um, and we're gonna, at the very end, pull it all together and learn um, how Rails does all of this for you. Um, but we're gonna learn what goes on behind the scenes um, under the hood of Rails. Let's see what is our next slide. There we go. Um, so if you've heard of MVC, it's the model view controller um, pattern. Uh, you'll see it with like a .NET framework um, as well as Rails and other, it, it's common in the end. It's one common pattern for web applications. Um, basically it is a model, which is your database or your business logic. Um, your views are what you would see um, on the screen, what the end user sees in their browser. And the controller is kind of the piece uh, that talks between the model and the view. So it handles requests, it um, processes information from the database, it will post information to the database. Um, so that's the architecture that Rail uses, and it's kind of good to uh, understand that that's, those are the pieces that we're doing. So each one of our user stories, we're going to have a model, a view, um, and a controller, um, and also a route. Um, the CRUD, if you hear of CRUD, it's an acronym for create, read, update, and destroy. And those um, are basically the patterns for an application or what each model would be able to do. So you can create a new item, you can look, read all of the items or one of the items. Um, you can make updates to an item in the database and you can also delete. Um, so that's basically what we're saying by CRUD. And HTTP verbs are um, the they're the how the you talked through the browser to um, these CRUD actions. So you would have a get request, post request, patch, put, and delete. I think um, if any of you have done a entry level job interview, I got asked that a lot. So those are kind of good things to kind of study study up on. Um, so I think with that, um, oh, I do want to show you all. So CJ, I'll, I'll scare, share my screen now if I could. Um, pull my item. Um, this. I have too many screens going on right now. Okay, can you see a screen with a GitHub repo? Yes, okay. So this is our GitHub repo. And I just wanted to um, go through that. We're going to um, cover these user stories um, in this workshop. We'll get through as many as we can. We may finish them all, um, but this is what we're going to, this is where basically our agenda. Um, in this GitHub repository, we have the main branch, which has the user stories, but I made a branch for each user story. So if you get lost, you can pop up here 
and um, see that going through each user story, you would have, um, I've gone ahead and done them all and there's in my way, there's always some like give and take of how you can do things. There's more, always more than one way, but um, so if you do get lost or want to look ahead, you have this. And there's also a slides um, file where I've gone through each of the user stories and you can copy and paste the code snippets if you want. So you don't have to do that. Um, but I want to make you aware that if you prefer to work at your own pace and you want to just read through and do all the items, you can do it that way. Um, normally, like a Learn Academy thing is we would have a lecture in the morning uh, for an hour or so, and then you would have the whole rest of the day to go through these. But we have limited time and we're going to just go through them together, kind of code along um, one at a time. Um, so with that, are there any questions? Or anything we've got? Okay, we'll get started. I find my, sorry, my screens keep moving around. All right, so our first user story is, as a developer, I can create an exercise tracking application. And so hopefully all of you have, I actually don't know what the experience level is, but I'm gonna create one. And um, as a developer, I don't make new Rails applications pretty much ever. It's so rare. <laughs> we always work on something that's already been done. But um, to get started, um, I'm going to go to my desktop. And this might be too small. I'm trying to use a smaller screen so that you all can see. And then I'm going to make I'm just going to um, make a new application. I'm going to call it exercise app. So Rails new exercise app. And this should go through and it creates everything for you. So if everyone wants to go ahead and create, do the same thing, you can create it wherever you want. Um, one other thing is anybody using Postgres for their database. Um, if you do use Postgres, you'll have to add uh, dash D Postgres SQL uh, dash capital T um, to create your app with Postgres. But uh, we don't, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So, um, we can do this with, um, also in, in Zoom, I think, can, do we have reactions where you can put your hand up and stuff like that, TJ, do you know? Yep, so if you have a question uh, or if you're ready to move on, feedback on those would be awesome. Um, so after you create the exercise app, you wanna CD into the exercise app folder. Quick question, yeah. Leanne. One yep. question is, does it matter which version of Ruby we're using? I am using Ruby 3.0, but I think it doesn't matter. Um, the first time I went through this exercise, I used Ruby 2.6 and I had also had an older version of Rails installed, but over the weekend I upgraded my Ruby and I upgraded my Rails. So I have new rail, newer versions of everything. Um, I think as long, there may be a few items that you might tweak and do a little differently with the forms um, when we're adding a new item to our exercise app, depending on the version, but we're here to help you with through that. But just use what you have on your computer right now. And that's probably the hardest part of all of this is getting set up. Uh, so getting everybody together on the same thing is probably too complicated since we all have different machines, but that's a good question. Um, Yep, I'm going to be using the latest Rails too. So um, you CD into your exercise app, and then we're going to uh, see my notes. Oh, that's see. Um, 
we're going to create our database. And we do that by Rails DB create. And then we're going to do Rails server. And if we do that, we get this. And if I go to my browser and do localhost 3000, we'll get this. Yeah, you're on Rails. And that's user story one is as a developer, I can create an exercise tracking application. Super easy. Are we good to move on to exercise or to user story two? See if we get thumbs ups. Thumbs ups. Yeah, I haven't seen any other questions come in. I had a few of those looking like they might have a question, but I'm not seeing anything at the moment. Oh, what was the first command? To create a Rails application. Here we go. I will scroll up. We're going to do Rails new exercise app. Or name it whatever you want. Any other questions before we move on to the next step? Second command. Um, once it's created, <laughs> then you're going to want to, um, for example, I did the LS to see what all the items are on my desktop, but you do CD exercise app. So, or the whatever you named your application. So basically, we're moving into the folder of the exercise app. And then after you're in that folder, we create the database with Rails DB create. And you'll get this created the database information. And then when we do Rails server, you should see. Oh, look, and I'm for some, <laughs> I forgot to change my Ruby version when we started. So I, I'm in a little bit, I'll have the wrong version of Rails. I'm excited. Um, yours probably will say Rails 6.1. Okay. Uh, our second user story, let me go back here, is as a developer, the exercise tracker will have an activity and a description. So this is the model portion of the MVC, um, the MVC architecture, the model, it's a business logic. So we're going to need a table in our database um, and we're gonna call it exercise because we're gonna be entering exercise and our exercise is gonna have two fields. We're gonna have an activity, which should be kind of like the title and we're gonna have the description, which will be, you know, title and description. We're just gonna keep it simple. Uh, for a more robust app, you might put the dates and, and, and locations, but we're just gonna start it um, simple with like an activity name and a description. And we're gonna use Rails. I'm gonna open a new tab here. So I'm using Command T to open a new tab. Uh, because I have the server running in this tab, I want to open a new tab because I'm going to create my model. And I'm going to use a Rails um, command to generate the model. So we can do that with Rails generate model. And the name is exercise. And our fields are going to be activity, which is a string and description, which is a string. And so this is how we do, this is part of Rails magic 
it'll generate everything, all the files that you need for you by doing this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And we'll see it's created a migration file, um, the exercise model, and it created tests, uh, which we're not going through tests, but there's a really, looks like a really good workshop later today on test driven development. And I would highly recommend you do that because as a new developer, the best way to level up and increase your skills is to do test driven development. It really makes you think about what you're doing. Um, I'm also going to open my code editor here. Um, I use Visual Studio Code. And we'll see that uh, we have in our app folder, in models, we now have an exercise model. Um, I'm not going to use live share right now, but so you'll get a things like this uh, when you generate. Um, if we go back now to our Gonna move these. Sorry. If we go back here and refresh our Rails server, it's probably going to tell us they're broken. Yeah, because we don't have our migrations. So every time you add a migration or add something to your database, you need to run the migrate command. So that is easy. It's Rails DB migrate. And you can see here it's now created the table exercises and I can even show you what the migration looks like if you I would like to see that but in a migration file, you can see it's going to create the exercises table. And we have a string of activity and a string of description and the timestamps are just when the items are created and updated The database keeps track of that for you. And now when we go back here we should be back on Rails again. One quick question in the Discord. I just want to make sure we take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, R, R was wondering if we, uh, if Rails generate model name doesn't, if you take a look at the question, maybe we'll have a better. Yeah, when we do Rails generate model, doesn't it create the database automatically? Is it necessary to do Rails DB create? I don't know the answer to that. I always just create the database when I start. And like I said, I pretty much know never start a new Rails application. So I do not know the answer to that. And then we got an answer. Thank you, Goth. All right. Um, so that is our next user story. We did. We're moving quickly. I'm going to let you guys work on your own as we go a little further, but I thought to get us all up and running. Um, yeah, that is a good thing. It is a good point. It's a good thing to try out because breaking things or trying things and see if they work is how you learn. So that is a good thing just to figure it out. Um, we got good, good answers, everyone. Um, so as a developer, I can add new exercise entries into my database. Um, what we're going to do here is just go into our Rails console and add some entries. And the reason we're going to do that is for our first kind of crud action, we're going to need to have some entries in the database to show on a page. So um, in here, um, I would do a bundle exec rail C. That's how I get into Rails console. You probably can do just rail C. Um, And then doing this, we can get right into, we get the IRB tools here, or we can do get into IRB. And uh, this is how I add an exercise. I would do E equals exercise dot new. And here it's starting to create. And then I would do E dot activity equals say running. And then I would do e dot description equals, uh, let's say we're running the Boston Marathon. I wish. And then I would do e dot save. And here you can say, see that it creates an item. 
Um, so we want to go ahead and create a couple of entries. I'm going to do another. I'm going to do leg day at the gym because we don't skip leg day. <laughs> so I have a couple. Zoom in. Okay. Is that better? Maybe one more time. Okay. I'm trying to use a smaller screen because I have that problem too. And I actually will move this up a little maybe. Yes, there is a way to automate the DB entries. In fact, um, yes, you can do seeds files. Um, as our applications get more complex at Notch 8, we do rake tasks to do that because sometimes a seed file is, isn't um, enough, but um, that's great. I love all this discussion. So Matt, do you want to take over one or do you want to wait and do the show, uh, the, the next story or do you want to wait for another one? I actually can't hear you. I think you're on mute. It wouldn't be a Zoom call without that, would it? <laughs> yeah, I got the bingo, you're on mute. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I only have one entry, but I think we're good. Okay. On that. Well, we want to make so, sure everyone's caught up as well. It also work with one entry. It will work with one entry. <laughs> um, so let me pull my... Okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, I will unshare. If I could find my Zoom to share. There it is. I'm excited to see how many people are here. I just thought for sure there'd be one person <laughs> or zero people show up for this. So I'm super excited to see you all here. Okay. Can everybody see the screen? Not yet. Hit the share button. I'm going to hit the share button. There we go. There you go. Out of the way. OK, so now we're going to be, um, as a user, um, I can see all the exercise entry listed on the home page of the application. Um, so for that, we're going to basically generate <clears throat> a controller for the uh, exercise group. So we're going to go into our terminal. Just a note that since we're in the, ER, the IRB, we need to exit out of that first before we can generate the controller. Yeah. So we're generating the controller um, and we're asking Rails to generate the controller exercise. Of course it didn't. Mm. 
one important thing to notice about rails is that the controllers are plurals and the uh, models are singular. So you want exercises within S. Okay. Mm. Yours is not working. Is anyone else getting that too? Oh, you just want to take the generate controller colon off of it and just do Rails generate controller. Oh, right. There we go. That's what we should see. Yep. And. In the app and in the controllers we should have exercise controller. Is everybody getting the same thing? Would you also mind zooming in a little bit as well, Matt? I can do that. If I remember. Does Command Plus work in? Are you on a Windows machine or are you on a Mac? Windows. Sorry. Okay. Better for everyone? Okay, so we're going to need an index method, um, a route, and the view for this. Uh, exercise controller. So we're going to create the index first. And for that, we're going to do another, um, we're going to do a definition called index with at exercise equal exercise all. So that will pull all the exercise from the database and put them into the um, index page or the of the um, <clears throat> application. And then um, for the view, we need to create the index pages if I remember correctly, right, Leanne? Yep, so we're going to do, so when we create generated our model, that was the model part and that pretty much stays the same. We don't really touch the model of the MVC for the rest of the exercises, but we're going to do the views and the controllers uh, for each one. And with our controller and our view, we also add the route. Um, so in our views folder, we should have an exercises folder. So it should be views, exercise, exercises, and then we would make a new file there. And we're going to call it index.html.erb. And in this HTML folder, We're going to have an H1 um, that will say exercise app. Then we're going to have a loop that will get all the exercises from our database um, and just render every single exercise. And we'll pull out the exercise activity as an H3. And as a paragraph, we'll put the exercise description. And we'll have the end. Um, for the end of the loop. Well, quick question here coming in, Matt. Uh, Krishna keeps getting a uh, error all of a sudden. It's the bundle install to install missing gems. I don't know if you're on the the Discord, but uh, the, the full question is right there. That does you you do need to bundle sometimes. Usually when you add a gem, so I'm not sure why you're getting it, but. Um, when you do bundle install, you will get, especially Noko Gary <laughs> takes forever to load. So they do take forever. Um, 
they do sometimes take a long time. Okay, so once we've got that all set up, we are going to go into. Let's hold up a second because that's a lot of typing. Unless we get all the thumbs up that we're good to go on. Or if we have any questions about what we're doing. Does any have any questions about how the ERB works? Oh, that's good to know that you have to, right? You have to install yarn. Um, that is a good note. Um, I was doing this over the weekend on Rails 6.1 and then when I started up this morning, I forgot to update to which version to use. So I'm using actually Rails 5, which is an older version. So the rail starting a new app in rail six does take a little bit longer too. Uh, we didn't generate the ERB file. We actually just manually created it. So in our um, exercise folder in views exercise, if you're using VS code, you can right click and say new file and um, and name it index.html.org. I'm answering questions. I should read the question. Is there any, oh wait, what was the command to generate the ERB file? So there is a way to generate the ERB files, but we'll get to that at the end. Um, we're just manually creating things right now. Um, and is there any pro and con between running a generate commands individually versus running the scaffold? Right. Um, yes, it would do that. So that the point of us doing this without the scaffolding is to see what Rails does when you run the scaffold. Like we're looking at what actually happens behind the hood, under the hood of Rails when you run these commands? Those are really good questions. Um, and normally in our, uh, in my workday, I will run the generate commands and delete things because I think Rails does a better job, a, a more complete job. Um, so I would um, say if I uh, might not need an index method perhaps, um, I would generate things and then just delete the pieces um, or just maybe uh, it's just highly configurable. So uh, some people will never run the generate commands. So it's a personal preference, but I, I try to like to like to do that for um, consistency. Thank you for putting that into the, the code into the channel, in the Discord channel. Okay, let's go ahead and sorry, Matthew, let's. Um, You're good. Gonna need to do the route. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go into uh, <clears throat> config and route.rb. And there we're gonna put the root of the index page and also some information. So we're gonna put root exercise uh, hashtag index. And then we're gonna do a get exercises with the S uh, is gonna be exercise pound index as exercise. 
So the as exercise is basically saying, hey, I want to just, if I just type exercise, I want to go to my index page. So it will be an alias for all the, for the pages without having to type exercises pound index every time. So that will result. And if I type exercises, cross finger, drum rolls, I've got running and training for running man, which is the only exercise I've got right now. <laughs> so let me go back to the code if you guys didn't have time. And what we did here um, with the root route, um, well, the first Per, the root route is what your home page will be. So we set our Rails home page to be the exercises index page. Um, on line five, where we have a restful route here, we're using the get verb. So we're getting um, exercises, which would be slash exercises. Um, it's mapping to the exercises controller index method. So when you see the exercises pound index, that's the controller method we wrote. It was an exercises controller, it was called index. And we added an alias. So as exercises, it's just gonna help us later to get to um, when we're writing link to, linking to between pages, it's easier to use the um, aliases. How's everyone doing? That is a good comment. It used to be recommended to put root at the bottom of routes. Lately, I've seen it at the top. The thing about routes is um, there's a lot of ways to write the routes. Uh-oh, somebody got the red screen of death. What's your message say? Recommended plugins for VS Code. I didn't see that. Um, uh, well, Leanne is uh, answering that question. Matt, do you have any recommended plugins for VS Code? Uh, yes. Um, and they're all on my work computer. Uh, <laughs> but no, you've got you've got the formatting. Um, I like, uh, which I didn't install on this one, but you also have the indentation call ring, which is really good when you're writing uh, a whole lot of code uh, to keep your indentation and not being like, how many indents do I have? And it's like, basically every indentation is colored. So you're like, oh, I'm on the green for that one. And just follow that one. Um, we... Thank you, Bobby, for answering. Yep, the syntax error. That's a very good um, uh, learning thing about Rails is that the error messages really tell you um, if you read the error message and then interpret it, it usually will tell you um, where your issue is. Some other things don't always give you good error messages. <laughs> I like that about Rails. I have not used RubyMine, but I have some coworkers that swear by it. 
I have one with the yeah the bracket pair colorizer. I love that because yeah. it finds your you can see where uh, if your brackets aren't lined up, um, the colors won't match, and you'll find it's easy to find the missing thing. <clears throat> But um, I can I can post my uh, my favorite into the uh, Discord chat and a little bit later. But yeah, there's there's plenty of um, extension that you can use with um, VS Code that will make your life so much easier. Um, they do have the Rails package, um, so. Okay, we need the code for the exercises controller. If you could go back to that. That was an index method. Uh, you had it. Oh, the controller. Exercises controller. We had a def index and add exercises, which is an instance variable. That means our view can see it. And we're using exercise dot all that's all of the exercises in our model in our database. Luke, were you, when you had same with me, were you having an error or are you good? Great, okay. Are we ready to go on to the next user story? I see some yeses. Okay. Um, you wanna go ahead? Do this one too, Matt, and then I'll pick up the next one. Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, our next user story is as a user, I can click on the activity of an exercise and be routed to a page where I see the activity and description of the exercise entry that I selected. And this is so, also known as the show page. Yep. So we're going to create the um, show controller. And with that, we'll have the def show and the exercise instance that will take the exercise and find with the ID of the exercise. So we'll take the ID of the exercise and then show the exercise. So we're going to go into our view. And create the file show. So you can see right there that because I didn't have the dot ERB, the colors are not right. And that's usually your first uh, first glance that something is wrong with the file name or the file extension. So we'll have an H3, an H3 that will get the exercise um, activity the paragraph with uh, the exercise description. And then this will need to go into our right. That one is for Neanne, can you uh, remind me what that one is, 
for was that for the uh, main page? Uh, the link to it goes on the index page. Yeah. So, um, Okay, so we should just have the H3 and the paragraph for this page. Is everybody good to move on? I got one. Okay, I'm looking at the questions here. Good question, Maddie. We're putting this on a different page. So we'll see. Um, <clears throat> can you go to your browser? Yeah. Um, her question is, aren't we already showing the activity and the description? Because the index we're iterating through it, so it's all, going to show all of them. Twice. Yes. Um, so what we'll have is we're adding a link to the word running, so you'll be able to click running, and you'll get the individual exercise, um, a page that has just one. So there's two get um, requests. There's a get all, and there's or get a group, and then there's a get an individual one. So we're doing going to be doing a get request for getting a single item. And we do that on a show page. Well, these are both reads. Um, the R in the crud. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our routes. So we did our controller action and we did our view and now we need to add a route. Yeah, we're gonna need the exercise slash ID of the exercise and that will get the controller show as exercise with the alias exercise. <clears throat> So far so good. And then now in the index, we're going to convert um, the H3 where it has exercise activity. We're going to just convert that to be a link to. So now when we click on that H3, we still needed the other pieces of that. Oh. Of that. We're only so replacing line seven. Request. Just line seven. Oh, do you want just line seven? Yes. We had one request to show the controller once more. Yep. Okay. So we added def show. And we're doing add exercise equals exercise dot find. And um, we're getting the ID of the exercise from the parameters, from the params that it's sent from the browser. Let's go back to the index and talk about that link too. So link to, um, if you do HTML, then you would know this is like an A tag, the anchor tag. Um, but link to is a method in Rails. So um, the method name is link to, and it has uh, the first two arguments. The first one is um, 
The first argument is like the text you would see in the link that you click on. And then the second argument exercise path is the route. So that's the href. So I like to think of it as just the link to the text and and the href, which we're using the Rails route. So when we gave that um, the route and alias as exercise, that's where we get exercise path. So you use the alias and the underscore path um, makes your uh, uh, makes like that's a route helper. And then we're passing in the exercise exercise.id. And that's where the, and then it takes, the browser sends that exercise ID to the controller and that's how it knows which exercise to show. So let's take a look in browser. Um, yes, we are recording this and it is gonna be posted. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> We got an error. Did yeah. anyone else get that error? Oh, mine is definitely different. Yeah. <clears throat> just compare because I've got another version of Rails, so that might be one of the uh, issues. What is the difference between using URL and path to refer to routes? I use them interchangeably. I don't know if there's a right answer to that. Yes, the word exercise looks funny. I The first time I did this exercise, I spelt it with a Z. So I had exercise with a Z and then uh, messed me up. But yeah, looking at these words over and over again. <laughs> I love that everyone is spelling exercise wrong. So yeah, so let's look at um, like let's go in your in your console and type Rails routes and see what you get if we have an exercise path. We've got no activity. Did you let's look at your routes file? Did it looks like it's not saved? Oh. Yeah. That will help. 
So for um, there we go. So now when we click on running, we go to exercise slash one. And we've got running with training for running man. <laughs> Auto save. I um, I'm trying yes. to keep track of there's a lot of questions in here. So uh, for Penny, I would try and check my spelling on activity to make sure it's spelled the same way in the database when you generated it for exercise activity. Um, unless you did not enter an activity when you added items to the database, if you didn't give it the activity title, um, then that might be why you get a nil error. Um, and then the Luke undefined local variable or method exercise for the exercises controller. Did you mean exercise URL? I'm not sure where that is coming from. If it is, yeah, I would check to make sure everything's saved and spelled correctly because a lot of times that is what it is. Um, and then the, I have auto save set on VS code. <laughs> that is great, but I don't like having my code saved until I literally save it because I like to manually save um, because sometimes I do things and I just need to undo them and I'd like to have my last saved version of, a, of an item. But everybody gets their own preferences. <laughs> I, I used to have the autosave um, up on basically clicking another window with, uh, I used to have add-on and it was great, but sometime you're like, no, I didn't want to save this. <laughs> so it's always, uh, it's always a struggle of like, do you want to manually save or do you want the autosave? So. Is everybody good? We have a couple questions. Should it be linked to exercise activity, exercise path, exercise? If you change it to that, are you asking what the link to should be? We want to have exercise dot activity because that will give us, it'll pull the item dynamically from the database. If you have it in quotes, exercise activity, that every link is just going to say exercise activity that it'll literally print that string. Yeah, we're kidding. Um, so it's preference. If you want it to be that way, then for sure you can do it that way. So with the quote. It, it, and would you like to show the routes one more time? So can you show the routes? Yeah. And Rod asked about exercises path. Are you asking um, exercises path would be the index exercise path singular is going to be the show page. And to go back to the um quotes for the uh, link to this is what it would be if we had the quotes around it. It would just say exercise activity dot activity. All right, so do you want to switch off again? Yeah.
Okay, can we see Oops, missing a meeting. Um, our next user story is as a user, I can see a form where I can create a new exercise entry. So we're going to do uh, the first part of the form, which is the get request for a form. Um, so in our controller, we're going to be in the exercises controller and we're now going to do I'm going to put it before. Uh, I'll just do it after show. So we're going to do the new method. So, so this is going to create, um, it's going to, this is a get request to get the form page. So the, to create a form, we have like two requests. We're going to have the get request, which shows us the form, shows the user the form and then the post request, which is going to post it to the database. That's when you submit. So we're doing the first part here. Um, and that in this case, our new method, again, we're going to use an instance variable. So we're going to have add exercise equals exercise.new. And so that's our first piece is in, is in the controller. I'm going to save again, like spamming the command S as, as we saw in the, in the chat. Um, and then we're going to need a new view. So in our views folder in exercises, I'm going to make a new file and I'm going to call it new.html.erb. And here we're going to make um, a form and we're going to use a form with um, tag. Now, because I didn't install with the right version of Rails, mine may end up looking a little different. I may run into the same kind of thing. Um, so we're going to put a title on the header, um, a header on the page, add a new exercise, add a new exercise. And then we're going to use our Ruby embedded Ruby code. And we're going to do a form with model at exercise do and form. So these are Rails helpers um, for building forms. So now um, each of our items in the form, which we're going to have the activity and we're going to have the description are going to each have a label and the form field. I'm spelling, I spell label wrong all the time. So this is our label. And we're going to have a text field. And then I like to add a break, a BR tag. So they are in two separate lines because we don't have any styling on this. And then after we have our two form fields, we're also going to add a submit button. So for this user story, our submit button isn't going to work. We're not going to hook it up yet. We'll do that on our next exercise. We'll do form.submit. And the text for our button is going to be add exercise. And then we need to do an end tag for our form. see some questions. Okay. 
we're good. Okay. Well, I would copy and put. Do you use the, um, how did you make it be a tag? Um, do you use the ticks to make it look like code in the Discord? I don't know. Triple ticks, okay. Thank you, Luke. Yep, there we go. I don't use Discord, we use Slack at my job. So this is new to me. Okay, so this is our view. Um, and then we need a route. So I'm gonna go to my routes file. And again, this is a get request because we're getting the form. So we're going to get exercises.new slash new. And we're going to exercises controller, new method. And we're going to do alias as new exercise. Because I have this small, can I move this over? I can do that. So I haven't broken anything. So if we go to exercises slash new, I don't have a route. Let's see, why did it tell me that? Exercises new. Oh, because I'm in red. Retro. Sorry, I was on the root path. So there's what our form will look like if we do exercises new. So right now the only way to get to it is to type in the URL into here, but so we're going to want to add. Um, a link, which is the next user story. How are we doing? Put my code back up. What does the controller look like again? We have a new method. Got that? Why, why do we need to use an instance variable in the new action? Aren't we only requesting HTML? Yep, I believe this is would work fine without it. Um, so I think you can actually, I think you could just do this without the, without this at all. And I think it's just a habit or a preference.
exercises slash new. It works just fine without the instance variable. I think it's just a habit I have that I always do that. That's a very good question. Um, so let's go. You need the instance variable for the form with helper and the route. There we go. That's me. Um, let's go on and uh, move on to our next story, which is basically to add a um, a link to this form on our index page. So after uh, it is as a user, I can navigate from the um, sorry from um, it, I can navigate from the home page to the form. Um, so we're going to add a link to on the index. Let's see if we remember, we're going to use the same pattern, the link to and the path. In this case, we do put a string. We had that before. Um, we want it always to say link to new exercise because that's the new exercise. Uh, it's going to take you to the new exercise um, form. And then our path is new exercise path. And I'm going to put it in a paragraph tag just to make it look a little prettier. And what this should do is on our home page. I should have a new exercise button. And it goes here. So the next step is to add a link, a link from the form uh, back to the home page in case you want to cancel, like if you change your mind. So we should have a way for the user to go from the form back to the home page. So we'll be adding a link to again here. And but we're going to put it back to on the show page. So on this page here, I'll give you all a few minutes to give it a go without without help. So we're going to put Uh -huh. um, the question is, can you show me the index page again? Yep. And shouldn't be on the new page. Um, you can also oh, put it on the new you're page. You're right. It should be on the new on the new page. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You probably can put it on the show page too. Sorry. Yes. And we wanted to look at the index page again. Yeah. Here we go. So we use that same pattern on our new page, link to the text you want to use, and then the path back to the home page. There's two ways to do this that I can think of. Do we want to go back to the root page or do we, the root home page or to the exercises index page? You can do it either way. So there's two paths you can choose for here. So my solution
So if we do it this way, I'm going to click back to home. It's going to take me to the localhost 3000. If we do it Excuse me for a second. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a tickle in my throat. If I do it this way. Oop, I want to go to a new exercise. I've got a syntax error. Oh, you forgot oh, that. I forgot. I, I accidentally deleted that. <clears throat> I have the back to home and then I have back to exercises index. I have. I have exercise controller. That's interesting. Exercises needs to be plural. So I got a new exercise. If I go back to exercises index, you'll see it goes to localhost 3000 slash exercises. If I use the back to home button, it goes to just localhost 3000. So those are two methods um, for your um, link back to home. Okay, Matt, can you take over for a bit? I got yeah. <laughs> uh, you 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 go drink some water. <laughs> and I'm guessing this is gonna be the last one since we're almost running out of time. Yep, and we do have in our in the repository, you can um if you just look in the slides, you can definitely go through all of the exercises. Um, uh, and get through it. Which screen are you guys seeing? I might have. Seeing your um, oh, yeah. editor. Okay. Cool. Um, so as a user, I can click a button that will submit my exercise entry to the database. Um, so we're going to need to go and save this. So we're going to have to create a method um, that is will be called create. That will take the exercise. Um, and then create the activity with a parameter um, of the activity. And the description will be the param from exercise description. So that will take the form with the activity and description and then um, send this to the database. And then we'll need to create the route for this. And then we're going to go into the routes. and then do this as a post. So we're gonna take the exercises and use the create method.
which should show as so activity let's go say swimming uh, Ironman training. I'm going to add the exercise. And if we go back, we then have the swimming. Ironman training. So far, so good, everybody. No template found. For the no template found error, I would try moving your route in the routes file, uh, the post exercises create above your above your show method. See if moving it up to line eight from where he has it on line eleven, um, if that works, because I was getting that error as well. Right, I think the errors that you all are getting has to do with the order of your routes file. <clears throat> because I had that error as well. And I moved them. I just moved the post above the show page. Let's see if that works. Yeah, the post statement that I posted is goes into your routes file. I guess we're getting close to um, being, is our time limit to 9.30? I think we've got a little um, buffer, but yeah, might okay. have like an extra five minutes. Let's just like hop down to the last um, slide. And basically you get the idea of how we're creating these um, routes in the routes file that map to our um, our CRUD actions. So we're doing the gets and the posts. And um, they're mapping to the items in the controller. Um, so what we would basically to talk about what is Rails magic, um, Rails, what we describe as Rails magic, it's just that Rails does all this for you. And people call it magic, but it's not. It's It, it has defaults sensible defaults um, that it will, <laughs> I'm watching you scroll through. Um, it has you, uh, it's funny that uh, this is reminding me of that uh, developers will hit the up arrow like a hundred times rather than type out a new command. <laughs> <into the thing. laughs> so um, basically Rails creates defaults actions and, and things for you. It does all of this routing under the hood for you. And um, someone alluded to you earlier in the in the um, Discord. Yeah, in the Discord. Sorry. I'm going to share real quick. Share button. OK. Um, so as a user, I would like Rails to create all of these for me. And basically, you run this command. Uh, it needs to be a freshly installed Rails, because now this command won't work. 
since I'm already in the app. Uh, let me go up one. I'm gonna do that whole up arrow thing. Ah. Uh, There we go. That's where I was on my wrong version of Ruby. Oh, I should have done it on my old version of Ruby. But anyhow, because <laughs> now I get to add yard and everything. You want me to try? That's fine. I don't think it's going to take that long. Any music? <laughs> do, 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 do. I have music going in my head. I do. <laughs> Nice. Well, this is the command we'd run. We would run the scaffold command. So Rails generate scaffold, exercises our model, and then we would put in our two um, fields, activity string and description string, and it would generate all of these files for us. It puts one simpler route file. It generates all the test file, the controller actions, it generates all the views, and it even gives a little bit of styling so it looks nicer. Um, Access the slides. Oh, I can share them with y'all. I'm going to post that command here. And So basically in the scaffolding, um, you will have the database will be exercise um, or the table will be exercise. And each uh, act, for example, activity will be the name of the column and it will be a type of string and description name of the column with a type of string. And you can add basically all your columns um, and types in that scaffolding, and that will create everything for you. So you're not just limited at two columns. You can create as many as you want. I just made a mistake by doing that. So, um, so I couldn't do it quickly, but um, I put the command for scaffolding into the file and on our, in our GitHub repo, I must have closed out of it. Um, on branch number, the last branch, the Rails magic branch here, I ran the generate file here. And you can see um our exercise controller now would look like this and so that's what that would look like um the controller would look different and the routes would look a little different. There's a much easier way to do the routes. Which is just typing the resources exercises here. Um, so basically that I just want to follow up and see if there's any questions. Um, GitHub link. I can do that again too. I just posted that for you. Okay, great. Thank you. And 
um, just really appreciate y'all coming out this morning. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, and just I'm Leanne, Thank you all. Matt, and TJ. <laughs> and uh, connect on LinkedIn or send emails if you have questions. I'm happy to answer. Yeah, 